Hey everybody, my name is Melissa. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make a necklace just like this. I have two here. One is brown leather, one is black leather. But I'm going to show you how I make my connected links here. And that's by fusing wire. I use pure silver wire for this process. And I'll show you how I'll fuse them together. You just make the links ahead of time and then fuse them together. I'll show you how I get them to link. If you're not familiar with how to fuse, I'll link a video up above to show you how to do that. So I'll show you the whole necklace. It consists of, well, we got the two uh, links that I fused. And then I have, I believe this is a two millimeter leather cord. This is black and this is the brown one. And then I, I make handmade cord ends with a couple jump rings and uh, a lobster clasp, some extender chain. And then I put this cute little leather tassel at the end and it kind of curves and lays on your neck like that. So let's get started. For this necklace, I found that making the bigger ring with 14 gauge wire works well and then using 16 gauge for the smaller ring. And that's pure silver round wire. This is a 16 gauge, so I'm going to make my small ring now. And all I use is a simple Sharpie as my mandrel. I'm going to use a rawhide mallet just to pound this little end round because it's sticking out. And need some flush cutters. The tool list will be down in the description. So I got one flat edge and one tapered edge. That's the small ring. Okay, both my rings are prepared, so I'll head over to the kitchen and I'll get these fused. Okay, I'm in my kitchen now. I'm ready to fuse these rings. I'm gonna do the big one first because it's gonna take more heat and a longer time to get it fused. And I'll show you how I link them together. Let's get this guy fused. Not too shabby. So now go ahead and attach your small ring to your large ring. And you're gonna have to make a divot in your block with a chain nose pliers or your tweezers. And that is so you can stand your larger ring upright so you have room to fuse your small ring. Let's get this small ring fused. Shouldn't take as long. Here we go. So this is how my rings turned out. I get this a lot where I get a little hump in the in the fuse area. I'll just end up filing that down a little bit. And to be honest, I redid my uh, larger ring because the first one was a little too large. The way I measured this one was it's a size 12 on a ring mandrel. I just measured it out at the size 12. This one's not quite round anymore, so I need to round it out gently because I have a ring attached to it. So rawhide mallet is good for that. So I'm gonna round out these rings, I'll be back. So the next step is pounding them out. And I'm gonna use this little hammer here. So I'm gonna pound them out flat first and then I'm gonna hammer the texture in.
Now the next step is let's attach our leather. I gave my rings a quick polish with my polishing cloth, ready to move on. I got my supplies all ready. I pulled out about 38 inches of two millimeter black leather cord. I got two 18 gauge jump rings. You can purchase them. I just made them myself. I got a lobster claw clasp here. Those are from Fire Mountain Gems. And I got about two inches of extender chain, which is just a cable link. I have that in bulk. All right, I find the center of my cord and I kind of make a pretzel loop. Like that. Bring one of the rings over, choose a side and bring it through. And bring it up through your pretzel. And cinch, cinch it down tight. So the other side, fold it in half, kind of find the center, make your pretzel. While editing, I noticed I didn't have footage on my little leather tassel. So you do the same technique on the end of your extender chain and you cut your tassel to about one inch. Cinch that knot down. Sometimes it takes some warming up to the leather to get it to cinch down really nice for you. Once you're confident that your knot is nice and tight and secure, you can go ahead and even out your leather. to get them as even as possible but sometimes it doesn't work out that's why I give myself extra and try to get your leather have a nice curve to it to make a nice necklace shape all right the next step we want to do is wrap my cord ends so I bring my two pieces of leather up side by side without twisting and I want to fold over like the first half inch over on itself so I have room to put a jump ring on. Next I'm going to use some 20 gauge round sterling silver wire or whatever wire you're using. It's about three inches. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it in half to get it started on this cord a lot easier. Slide that on. I'm going to wrap in both directions so I put it about halfway down my fold. I'm going to give it a little pinch to kind of lock it in. This is going to be tricky since we're doing two cords at once. I'm going to bring one side over that way. I'm going to bring this side over the other way. And then just start wrapping. Making sure my cord ends stay even, or my leather pieces stay even, and I don't pull one out farther than the other one. I tighten and lock down as you go. I call this the ugly side, so I would want to make sure my wire ends on the ugly side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the end inward so I can tuck it away so it doesn't get snagged on anything. I'm going to open this upper one up again because it's not going to make it around to the back. Place my jump ring in there, an extender chain on this one. Do the same thing for the other side. Follow these guys up. Yeah, kind of smush them down. Make them bend three more inches of 20 gauge wire, which I'm going to bend in half. This one came out a little neater than the other side, but it looks like my, I don't know what happened with my leather, it looks like it twisted. 
and something happened where it twisted. See that? It's not gonna lay right if it's all twisted. Okay, let's go ahead and straighten out our leather. I should have checked it while I was working on this. There's so many things to keep track of. Hopefully I can fix this without getting a new piece of wire. But it is much harder to work with now that I bent it all up. Good. I didn't have to waste this wire. Alright, found my jumper. Let's open that puppy up. Gonna see how this is gonna be laying. Curve this way with the lobster clasp pointing that way. Okay, there you have it. I think we're all done with our necklace. This one ended up being about 16 inches with a two inch extender chain. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for future tutorials that you would want to see. And also don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I make a new video each week. You can also check me out on social media. My links are down below in the description. Feel free to tag me in your designs inspired by one of my tutorials. I would love to see them. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.